So before we get to our regular segments and commence with the yucks, I wanted to talk a little bit about multidimensionalism. Okay. Multidimensionalism and cartoons. Now, growing up, I always considered myself very sensitive to other dimensions in the sense that I never got into any major accidents growing yeah. up, my childhood and my teens and my my 20s. I never got into any major accidents, but I got damn close to accidents. Okay. And those would always fuck me up. And, and I think they fucked me up more than uh, it would fuck me up to be in the actual accident because I always thought, like, like, like just the other day this happened to me. I, was, I had parked my car in front of my house where I normally park my car, and I'm going to get out of the car. But then I'm like, oh, let me, let me uh, check my phone really quick before I get out. I checked my phone. Good. Now, uh, without looking, I go to open the door, and seconds before I do, a car speeds right by, and I, om- I the, the car was so close and wasn't expecting it was speeding, yeah. and it wasn't expecting some random Mexican to open the door. So he almost took my door out. Okay. And that bothered me because in my mind, I could see the other me's. Yes. I could see the me who had the door taken out. I could see the me's who uh, uh, just jumped right out of the car like I wanted to and would have been mowed down. There are me's who died from this. There are me's who were injured from this. You know what I'm saying? This is how I always saw my life yeah somewhere out there there's a me or a number of me's who did get into that accident so close calls for you are hideous accidents for other you's yes. somewhere out there somewhere out there Sing well but you also not- you also have to consider all the other you's that that nothing happened to you much at all one of you got out of your car and found a penny. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and those ones are probably close to my universe. If the universe is like a bell curve, yeah, then I'd like to think that I'm right here in the middle, and uh, all of the me's around me are me's where nothing else, nothing else happened to. And it, the farther you get past that point in the bell curve is when uh, crazy-ass stuff happened. Yes. I, I never saw this, though, as complex, experimental, multi-dimensional theory. I saw it as Steve's choose-your-own-adventure theory. <laughs> because I was young, I had a hard time visualizing this complex theory. Oh, but I love choose your own adventure books. Yeah. They were everywhere back in the day. I used to read the crap out of those. I used to cheat like crazy all the time. I'm like, okay, I'm going to choose to go down the hallway, turn to page 86 and, uh, oh God, I'm dying. Go back, go back, go back. I choose to not go down the hallway. Yeah. So, those books in my head were my attempt to visualize this complex multidimensional theory. I had no other frame of reference. Yeah. Then one day, I'm a young man working at the bookstore. Uh, and I'm working the magazine section in Arizona. And we get an issue of Discovery Magazine, a science magazine. And... I flipped out because right there on the cover was my complex theory. I mean, it's not mine. It's not my theory, obviously. Mm-hmm. But still, this is this is uh, uh, off in my twenties and thirties. Uh, if you knew me in my twenties and thirties, and I ever got drunk with you, there's a fifty percent chance I've talked to you about this. Okay. Also. Uh, if you knew me in Sacramento during my, if you knew me in California during my 
smoking pot and closing the bar theory, there's a 90% chance you've heard me talk about this. Okay. <laughs> so that's exciting. But, uh, and, and the, the cover of Discovery Magazine did a great job of explaining it. It's just a woman in color. It's an illustration of a woman in color, like putting her groceries in the car. Yeah. But then she is surrounded by like uh, silhouettes of the exact same thing in black and white all around her. Yeah. Doing the exact same thing. And uh, I bought the magazine. I read the article. Um, it helped me word it better. Basically, the theory that the magazine had on the cover was that we are constantly surrounded by an infinite number of alternate realities in which an infinite number of, of possibilities happen to us. It's just we can't see those other realities because we are stuck in our own. Right. Um, with that legitimate scientific multidimensional theory in my mind, the possibility of infinite universes with the possibility with the possibility of infinite universes in your mind um now i'm getting way off the subject <laughs> if we are constantly surrounded by an infinite number of alternate realities in which an infinite number of possibilities infinite in which an infinite number of possibilities right. um are possible every time you see a movie or watch a tv show isn't that just a glimpse into another possible alternate reality? No, I'm going way too far with this, Bella. Go that on. is a good. That is a that is a good statement. I am going way too far with this, but there's a there's a, there's always a part of me that's like that's like when I first watched the Guardians of the Galaxy movie for the first time, I thought, so if there is an infinite number of alternate realities out there, there is a reality where Guardians of the Galaxy actually happens. Who would I be in that? Do they have bookstores in space? Yes. <laughs> that's a legitimate thought, I think. Oh, that is a very legitimate thought. It, it, it... Every, every, if you have into infinite realities or infinite universes is what we would really be talking about, then, then there is no probability anymore. Yeah. You know, it, it's not because like that could probably happen. happen. That will definitely happen someplace. Yes. Because exactly. all possibilities have to be I'm trying to figure a good way of breaking that down a little easier. No, I understand where you're coming from. That's that yeah, that's basically my theory about every television show, every every everything. There's an alternate reality out there where the anime Yuri on Ice is real. Right. Because if there's an infinite number of possibilities, then anything that could ever happen has happened in another universe out there. Including monkeys having written the complete works of Shakespeare. Yes. Yes. So, so in a very weird sort of way, a writer, a producer, a, a director is just someone who is able to look at other dimensions. Yes. Yes, you could, or uh, in, in or uh, begin a podcast. So yes, that would that would definitely be a way of looking at it. Yeah. Alternate universes are called AUs. Yeah. So, cartoons. Well, wait. Let's just let's just finish that off, and let me just cap this off um, okay. with with depressing reality. Okay. We do not yeah. know yet if other universes even exist. Yeah, and it's we all have absolutely that. no idea what those other universes may be. Yeah. Now, it is highly mathematically possible. You know, because that's just how science works. First, they figure out the math on something <laughs> to show that this thing should exist. And then they yeah. go looking for it. Hmm. <laughs> um, I'm while you're talking, I'm trying to <laughs> pull my hair back and imagine the alternate reality, the uh, the universe where I'm bald. 
Because <laughs> there's probably a number of different universes out there where I'm bald, oh. and it's like, I don't know. I think I'm still pretty good looking. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm still a pretty good looking dude. Um. <laughs> I want us to get to Mars as soon as we can. Yeah, you know, I wanna, yeah. I, I, I wanna, I, I wanna go to Mars in kind of a total recall kind of way. Nice. They have found huge amounts of methane in the Martian atmosphere. That's nice. really exciting. Yeah. Uh, what were you? What because, are you trying to say, Bella? What have you been trying to like um, mumble your way through for a while? Here, Bella? Have you ever thought like the idea of alternate? universes and like religions and the thought that they're gods things like that have you ever thought that like those are just that's just fake and those are just ways that humans entertain themselves um yes so <laughs> cartoons Yes, we haven't left. We have. It's important to note we haven't left this discussion. We have not left this this discussion. I still sometimes have a hard time wrapping my head around this concept, but you know what helps me understand this complicated concept? Yes, Rick and freaking Morty. Okay, <laughs> the Adult Swim animated show. Yes. Which is getting very popular. We have so much Rick and Morty stuff at work now. So really? much Rick and Morty stuff at work. Oh. Yeah, we've got we've got card games. We've got this Mr. Me Seeks box that makes noise and it's a game. And uh, oh my god, we've got so much stuff. And I'm seeing it everywhere with Pickle Rick and all of this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. The shows are written really well. Like they wrote the Pickle Rick episode and showed a preview of Pickle Rick, knowing that people would freak out about Pickle Rick and, oh my God, Pickle Rick, Pickle Rick t shirts and this and that. But the reality of that episode, when you watch it, is that everyone's depressed during that podcast. Everyone's depressed during that episode because Rick has turned himself into a pickle just to get out of family therapy. <laughs> oh sorry honey i would love to go to therapy but uh, i'm a pickle <laughs> and this is just another you know example of him being a dick yeah so the whole episode is sort of a fake out like the last episode starts with rick and morty and they're finally going to atlantis and have an exciting atlantis adventure and when they finally go to the into the portal and go into Atlantis. The episode takes you to a completely different universe and shows you a an episode that has nothing to do with what Rick and Morty are doing in Atlantis. Is Rick and Morty based at all on Back to the Future? Uh originally Rick and Morty was created by specifically originally it was doc and marty and it was yeah. doc and marty's 100 percent official uh exact canon back to the future for adventures and literally it was just like the creators of rick and morty before they made rick and morty trying as hard as they can to piss off universal <laughs> And they would do stuff like that. They also had another cartoon that they did online called the uh, My Five Cosbys. Okay. And it was about this guy who loved Bill Cosby, so he cloned a bunch of Bill Cosbys, <laughs> and now he lived in a house with a bunch of different Bill Cosbys. The Cosby Show. And it, it, it and was didn't... like my ten, my ten Cosbys or something like that. Well, I'd love to help you, but unfortunately, I'm only the Bill Cosby that tells long-winded stories <laughs> you need the you need the caring bill cosby i think he's in the kitchen so yeah originally it was literally just doc and marty and they were doing it just to piss off universal yeah. they were trying to just get as many cease and desist letters <laughs> as they can <laughs> So what they did is they decided, like, okay, if it can't be Rick, if it can't be Doc and Marty, it'll be uh, the Doctor and Mary. Like they were literally trying to change it just enough. 
yeah to piss off universal but also uh still continue with their crap so when adult swim came and knock and said hey we like your idea but you cannot in any way piss off universal anymore then they got the concept of doc and marty and they added so much complex level shit to it yeah that now it is a really entertaining and deep science fiction show really just yeah that just so happens to be written by one of the guys who did community (laughs) so it's a win for everybody i have every episode and i love it and i watch it just all the goddamn time it's a fucking wonderful show I love Rick and Morty. And also, it does a great job of explaining multi-dimension because there are an infinite number of Ricks out there and an infinite number of Mortys, and they're constantly getting into adventures with each other. And they go to other dimensions where other things happen, and there's an infinite number of dimensions, and sometimes they'll just go to a dimension where there's just a bunch of butts. (laughs) Or... One time they go to a, a dimension where chairs sit on people. Yeah. And that's it. And it, like, I'm really excited about Rick and Morty, but I realized recently that this is the best way to describe this complex multidimensional theory. Yeah. Yeah. Is just, this is how you do it. You know, Rick and Morty, basically that's us. There's an infinite number of Steves out there. Some of, a lot of them are the same as you. Some of them are wildly better. Some of them are wildly worse. Yes. Just be happy with what you have. Yeah. There but is, yeah, there is, is, there is a Steve out there somewhere with an eye patch and a cutlass. Yes. Yes. There's an evil <laughs> Steve out there. Yeah. Who one day is going to try and take me down. Yes. 100%. Who once 100% attacked lethal. the Crimson Permanent Assurance. Bella, why are you covering me in my cape? There's another band name. Well, the Crimson Permanent Assurance was a Monty Python sketch in The Meaning of Life. Yes, the Crimson, <laughs> Crimson Permanent Assurance is the one part of Monty Python's The Meaning of Life that you can show a house full of Mormons. Yes. I know that for a fact. Yes, and it was very, I, I, it was very confusing when I saw that in the theater, because I'm going to see a Monty Python movie and it opened with this, and I'm like, "What the fuck is this?" Yeah. Until you start picking out Monty Python characters, yeah, like in the background and stuff. Yeah, like actors and shit. Yeah. Yeah. You see what I'm doing here, Bella? You see this? Me brushing my hair back? Yeah. I apparently do that every five seconds. <laughs> and uh, I'm trying to stop, but it's impossible. It is impossible. <laughs> if you also notice, if you watch my live feed, when I do story time, I do this all the time. I get my collar and I pull it out I from my too. neck. Yeah, every five seconds during story time. I see myself okay. doing it and I try not to do it and I am wildly unsuccessful. <laughs> oh my shirt is too short. Yeah. It's uh it's like Mitch Hedberg. I feel like I'm just being choked by a really weak midget <laughs> just all day. I need to make all of my shirts a V-necks, which is gonna make it difficult to wear a tie. But I'm still like gonna V-necks. I'm gonna be the first man to really rock V-neck ties. <laughs> yes. So that's exciting. But I say methane on Mars and I get no reaction? <laughs> methane on Mars. That's going to be our third album. Yeah. Yeah. Methane. Yeah. But that is a really, really good indication that there at least at one point was there was life on Mars. Because methane... Point. Methane is farts. Did you hear that podcast? Methane is farts. Methane is farts. So there are people. So there are farts on Mars. 
No, the yeah. methane's in the, still in the atmosphere, so mm-hmm. it's still there. Yeah. What, 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 what created those farts, where those farts emanated from, that we haven't found yet, but we know something farted. Yeah. I... You were totally bored. <laughs> Me? No, no, sorry. I got distracted. I was trying to be sexy for the live feed. Oh, okay. <laughs> thought that maybe we could get more people watching the live feed. If I... What? Oh, <laughs> Chelsea, wasn't it? What was her name? Chelsea Manning. Yeah, I had done a I had done a short film and I needed a sexy girl for one for one part. And she had shown up and got completely hammered on rum with my partner. <laughs> and it was horrible. It was horrible. She just kept looking into the monitor to see how sexy she looked. Sorry, my mouth was yeah. full. Hmm. I just showed my boobs. Yeah. Oh. Kind of like you, see? That's what yeah, I just figured, yeah. like, like if we're gonna get, if we're gonna get viewers. I need, yeah, I need to show my tatas. Whip it out. Yep. Show us your car. That'll, that'll be next. That'll be next. Hey there. Put a little hey poncho. There, a little poncho and a sombrero on it. I'm trying to do some uh, blue steel. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. I hate that movie, but I'll do Blue Steel until the day I die. I hate that fucking movie. Yeah. It's not in any way funny, but yes, you is. said, Blue Steel, and I'll break out some goddamn Blue Steel. That's amazing. I I like the both of them. I, I I like the new one. I don't like the new one as much. Yeah, but I I love the two Zoolander movies. I like uh, I like uh, I like the fact that David Bowie's in one of them. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. He's in space. <laughs> 